if the wind was right down the runway. So I flew over Connell's run airport, and sure enough, the wind was right down the runway. So I turned left downwind for whatever it would be, runway 25 or something like that. And turned left downwind, cut my power, <clears throat> started coming in. And uh, on left downwind, everything was going pretty good. And uh, I turned to, to left base and noticed that I was dropping a little faster than I wanted to. So I gave a little more power. And when I turned on final, I was pretty low. But that was okay because I didn't want to waste any runway. And But I can, the wind was blowing pretty hard. The sock was almost straight out. The wind was blowing pretty hard. And so I was dropping and wasn't getting to the runway. So <laughs> I did things backwards. <laughs> I pushed in on the stick and pulled back on the throttle. <laughs> Which <laughs> was... I should have uh, pushed in on the throttle and pulled up on the stick. So I corrected that very rapidly, which, by the way, I was probably pretty close to the ground by then. And you can't see out the front. I should have been sitting on a pillow or something because you couldn't couldn't see straight out the front. So you had to nose it down a little bit, make sure you're in line with the runway, and uh, kind of look around the side. And I got it right down next to the runway, and I pulled the power back and held everything and let it sink in. And uh, kept everything controlled. The wheels touched once, went up in the air. The wheels touched twice, went up in the air. The wheels touched three times. <laughs> Finally, on the fourth time, I had the presence of mind to give it just a little bit forward stick, which held it on the ground. And I couldn't get it to slow down. I looked down, I was idling. I had to throttle all the way back and I was idling at 1,500 RPM. Meantime, I'm trying to work these rudders that seem to be a little bit sticky. But they do, you know, I mean, you can use them. It's just that they're not smooth operating. So anyway, I, uh, I'm i working those and I pull back on the throttle and it won't come back anymore. So then it's, it's a vernier throttle, by the way, but the guy says he never uses it as a vernier. So naturally, it's worn out. Which, uh, so, you know, but I can't get it, so I turn it, and sure enough, that slows it down. And when it slows down, then I can let the tail drop. And about the time the tail drops, just a little while after the, just a little while after the tail drops, then it starts getting hard to control. So I get my feet up where the brakes are. I start trying to put the brakes on, and, uh, start going back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth across the runway. And almost go off the runway but uh, managed to keep everything under control and taxi down to the FBO office and uh, shut the engine off and sigh a sigh of relief, thinking that I am finally on the ground and the only thing I have to do is yet is to fly to Richland. So I undo my seatbelt, I get out, and some lady's there at this little uh, trailer house thing. She looks out the door and she's nice and smiling and she tells me to go ahead and get as much gas as I want. There's the gas pump, and come let her know how much I got. So I think, well, that's all right. I don't mind doing that. So I, I move the plane over by the gas pump, which is done by picking up on the tail and just pushing it around. And I uh, start the gas pump running, and it goes to 4.6 gallons and quits. But that's all right, because 4.6 gallons is about all I need is more than I need to get home because I'm at Connell and all I have to do is get to Richland even though there is a headwind so I uh, I um, fill it to 4.6 put the cap on properly turn the plane around so it's facing frontwards and go in to pay for it and the lady takes my money I went into the bathroom I walk out the door and I think, oh, somebody has to hand prop this baby. So I ask her if she knows how and she looks at me funny like, you got to be kidding. So then I ask her if uh, she can pull the chocks out after I get it. I know she's not too sure she wants to do that, but she calls somebody to see if they'll come help us. And nobody answers, nobody comes. And so she says, all right, I'll come hold the chalk, pull the chocks out. So we... Uh, 
get out there and I give her instructions on how to do it. She's scared to death. And so I, uh, I start trying to hand prop it, and I can't get it to go. About that time, some guy drives up in a truck that works there. And so he, uh, <clears throat> he comes over, and he's going to hand prop me. Well, first thing, it started up and then died, and that's because I forgot to turn the gas on. So he did it again. It's pretty hot too, and I was in my leather jacket because it's cold flying, but it's hot on the ground. And so I'm sitting there sweating. He's sitting there sweating. Finally, he gets it started, and I taxi up the runway. And uh, I find that if you taxi real slow, it's easy to steer, and if you taxi real fast, it's easy to steer. But there's a point right in the middle there where it is not easy to steer, and you need your brakes. And they ain't very good brakes on that. So, get up to the end of the runway, and I'm going to make a 180, right? Well, I get clear over to the side, and I start to turn, and it won't turn because this, the brakes aren't right. And I'm in the middle of the runway, a narrow runway. I'm in the middle of it, and I'm only about 90 degrees turned around, not 180. I only have one choice. Well, I have two choices. I can go ahead and keep trying to turn and go off the edge of the runway, which, by the way, there's about a 10-foot drop-off. Uh, just off the gravel at the edge of the runway. I can either uh, do that or 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 kill it <laughs> and uh, turn it around by hand and maybe try to hand prop it with a rock in front of the wheel or something, you know. So anyway, I just decided I'll just give it full power, full left brake, and I did. And I went over into the gravel and I bounced around through the gravel and came out onto the runway. At which point I just gave it full power <laughs> and got out of there. Well, I forgot to tighten my seatbelt, and th that was all right. It was on. It just wasn't tight. So that was a little bit disconcerting. But anyway, we got off the ground, started climbing. It climbed all right. Got up there. Got to, uh, went up to about 2,000 feet and started my trip to Richland. Again, it was turbulent strong headwind real strong headwind and I uh, had to fly around a, some sort of a f fire in a field and the smoke was going up maybe 8,000 feet so I flew around that and an hour later I was coming well not quite an hour later I was coming into Richland no radio and uh, so I I uh, I uh, came over. I flew over Richland, and there was a the windsock was limp. Believe it or not, here's this windstorm, and the windsock is limp, just because of coincidence is all. So I decided, okay, I'll land on runway zero one, which is a normal runway to land on. Now the wind should have been coming for me the way it was blowing. I should have had to land on runway two five. But the, the sock was limp. So I come around, flew out over West Richland, come around for left downwind for zero one, uh, cut the power, flew the plane really nice, come around, left downwind, left base, turn to final. As soon as I got on final, I noticed that, man, up there where I was, it's pretty windy. I had to cockeye the plane to the left. I thought, well, that's all right. It'd be calm when I get to the ground. I got down to the ground, and it still wasn't calm. I had to bank the plane to the left and and use rudder to the right, and uh, it was really a mess. And so I got down there, and the wheel hit, and when the, and the wheel hit pretty hard. I was trying to do wheel landings. And the wheel hit pretty hard, and it bounced. And boy, when it bounced, it went way up, and I didn't want to stall. So I gave it full power. And started to climb out to come around again. And I looked over at the windsock, and sure enough, the windsock was straight out now for runway 25. So I flew up uh, over the little potato plant or whatever it is they got there, and uh, climbed out, circled around to my right, and came in on runway 25. And uh, when I came in on runway 25, I did a wheel landing. And everything went real great. The only thing was, I got to that one point where I had to slam the brakes on. And I'm kidding, not kidding you, I was all over the runway again with those brakes like that. 
So uh, put the brakes on, slowed the plane down, and taxied it over. And at four, boy, I don't remember what time it was. It was like 4:40 or something like that. Anyway, 5:40, 5:40. That's about what it was. About 5:40. I uh, had landed, shut the engine off. Of course, same thing happened in Connell. When you shut the engine off, your ears are now rumbling very loud. And as I sit here, I'm still rocking back and forth. Shut the engine off. Took another great big breath. <laughs> and uh, crawled out of the plane. I was really hot. Didn't realize that I had been windburned and sunburned really bad which is okay that's nothing no big problem but uh, anyway then I called Unicom and they said somebody was coming to get me and pretty soon Pastor Griffin showed up in his airplane he landed I didn't know he was coming to get me I thought he was moving his airplane over for the air show so we talked a little while he looked at the airplane and finally he said you ready to go and I said what and he said I'm going to take you over to Pasco where Pastor is waiting for you